Hello viewers, this is Dr. Sumit Bakshi. Today's video is next part of SPSS tutorial in which I will demonstrate how to perform one sample t-test. It is used to analyze whether two means are significantly different or not. For that, let's assume title of my research study is to study the effect of cooperative learning on marks of students. Here I want to know whether cooperative learning affects the marks of students. It can increase, decrease or there can be no effect. Since there is no control group, the researcher wants to compare group of students who were taught through cooperative learning, that means sample mean to the population mean, which is already known. For this null hypothesis will be there is no significant difference between marks of students, which is sample mean to the population mean. I can write null hypothesis as mu which is sample mean is equal to population mean which is 80. I have assumed population mean is 80 which is collected through different data set. Here one thing to note down is if population mean is known and standard deviation of population is unknown then we use t-test. But if population mean is known and standard deviation of population is also known in that case we use z-test which I will cover in the separate video. Here in this video, I will focus only on one sample t-test. For that, I have taken fictitious data set. This is my fictitious data set in which first column is ID number. Second column is you can see marks of students in a test conducted after teaching through cooperative learning for a month. I have already set the properties of this data set in SPSS. You can see this these properties in variable view. Now to conduct one sample t-test, you need to go to analyze, then compare means, then one sample t-test. Here test variable is marks, so I will move marks to the test variable. And test value is population mean, which I have assumed is 80. So I will enter 80 here. Then press OK. I got SPSS output, these two tables in SPSS output, first table is descriptive statistics in which N is number of participants, then mean of sample, then standard deviation, standard error mean, all these things in descriptive statistics, first table. Then second table is inferential statistics which tell us which tell us to find out sample mean is significant different from population mean or not. So from this table, second table, we will find out whether there is significant difference between means or not. In second table, first column is T value. Second is degree of freedom, which is N minus 1. Here are N is 25. 25 minus 1 is 24. Third is significance value or you can also say it as p-value. Then mean difference and then confidence interval. Now to check the mean difference, we can check it through three ways. First way is from t-value. For that, you need to check student's t-table. We need to check critical value from student's t-table corresponding to degree of freedom. Here our degree of freedom is 24. So corresponding to 24, we will check the critical value which is in table. And then if t value, our t value is greater than that critical value or you can say alpha value. In that case, we can say our means are significantly different. So let's check a t value. This is student's t table. In student's t table, so, uh, in degree of freedom 24, because that degree of freedom is 24. In degree of freedom 24, this is critical value, alpha value at 0 0.05, 2 0.064. This is in two tail test. You can check my other video for detail of one tail to two tail test. So my critical value, alpha value is 2.064. Let's go back. So my critical value is 2.064, which I checked from T table. And my T value is 2.320, which is 
greater than 2.064. That means from this, I can conclude means are significantly different. Second way is to check from p value. If p value is less than 0 0.05, in that case, we can say means are significantly different. If p value is less than 0 0.05, our p value is 0 0.029, which is less than 0 0.05. So, from this, again, I can conclude that means are significantly different. Sample mean and population means are significantly different. You can also see sample mean is 83.76 and our population mean is 80, which we assumed. So, 83.76 is greater than 80. Our sample mean is greater than population mean. From this, we can understand cooperative learning increase marks of students because sample mean is greater than population mean. We can write it as T24 degree of freedom is equal to T value which is 2.3. Zero. At, at p value 0 0.029. We can write it as this. Now, third way out is to check from the confidence interval. From confidence interval. As we are checking mean difference is 0. So, if confidence interval includes 0, then means are not significantly different. They are non-significant. But in our case, our confidence interval does not include 0. As a lower confidence interval and upper confidence interval, both are positive. It does not include 0. In that case, we conclude the means are significantly different. Hence, from all the three ways, we have concluded sample mean is significantly different from the population mean. And also, we know sample mean is greater than population mean. Therefore, we can interpret teaching through cooperative learning can increase marks of students. That's all. Thank you for watching. If you like my work, please give thumbs up and subscribe to Dr. Sumit Bakshi. Do comment below. Your comments motivate me to make more such videos. Thank you.